Today I'm going to show you my hair care routine. This video has been the most requested video, so I thought I would film it for you guys today. These are my notes of kind of what I want to go through. I also have like supplements, my favorite products, just anything related to hair care that I could offer to you in this video. Growing up, everybody in school was very like judgmental and I didn't have good grades. I looked really weird. Um, and I feel like I didn't really have anything to offer outside of myself. My hair was really flat and and like kind of like bowl shaped. I kind of wanted to figure out why it was like that growing up in every other aspect, maybe like friendships, my appearance, um, popularity. I didn't really have much to offer. So I kind of wanted to at least start where I was most unhappy and I think that was my hair. That kind of attributed to the most about what I felt like outward appearance I could change. I started doing like my own research and see what I was doing wrong. For me it was more so as a defense mechanism because I didn't really have many friends. I was constantly made fun of and I think I've always just had a very low self-esteem so I think I looked for something to help resolve my self-esteem issues. First I'm going to go over my like tips. So the major brand that was promoting the no shampoo method but still with their product was the brand Diva Curl and I say was because most people nowadays have cancelled that brand. At that time it was like the major brand that was in most salons and most hair care studios and stuff like that. It was kind of like a cult following and still essentially is because it does work. What that concept was is that your hair has a natural oil called sebum. That's what most people are washing out if they're using a shampoo or conditioner. Shampoos and conditioners are really harsh so you don't really want to wash it out because sebum in itself has the natural ability to cleanse condition and keep itself healthy. So going along with that, some people really recommend using a no shampoo method. Um, especially if you're using a drugstore conditioner which has cleansing properties that even a shampoo has in itself. Over time what you will see by doing a no shampoo method, especially over the course of two weeks which is when the environment in your hair is supposed to self-regulate, in the first week it will be kind of too greasy and too oily. That's because the sebum isn't being cleansed out from a harsh shampoo or conditioner. You'll see that it's more conditioned, more volumized, and you're not exposing it to harsh chemicals and ingredients. This is where I can start recommending products. The first product I'm going to recommend instead of a normal shampoo and conditioner is the WEN cleansing conditioner. And this comes in a lot of ingredients. It's a cleansing conditioner, so it's essentially to replace a shampoo. Their entire product marketing slogan is friends don't let friends use shampoo. For this one, the one I'm using is the Winter Red Current Cleansing Conditioner, which is a limited edition one, but I like the smell of it a lot. It's supposed to work with all hair types and textures. It's a 4T complex and strengthening amino acid blended with red currant, rose flower, patchouli leaf, and geranium extracts and oils that are a perfect combination to help maintain moisture, strength, volume, and shine. First non-shampoo shampoo that I was using, um, now I use a lot of different ones, but I think this one's a really good first option if you want to start out by using the no shampoo method and then using this after two weeks. A lot of people know I work for large YouTubers and style influencers so I have a lot of PR packaging and I have a lot of recent product from the brand Way and Living Proof. So two products from Living Proof and Way that I would recommend are their dry shampoos and the reason that you would use a dry shampoo is that you don't want to shampoo your hair but you still want the oil, sweat, and odor to be eliminated. So this is good to sit in your hair while you go to the gym, for example, is when I use it. And then at the end, you just wash it out and then follow up with a conditioner. The type of conditioner that I use, which I'll show you later on. What a lot of people don't know is that conditioners have sometimes the same cleansing properties that a shampoo has. So if you go to like Target for example and you buy a shampoo and conditioner, typically the conditioner will have the same ingredients for cleansing properties that the shampoo has, probably just in a lesser amount. So what I did to completely eradicate that issue, all of a sudden I started seeing a lot of hair masks being produced and sold on shelves, but I didn't know what it was. So 
So I tried a lot of hair masks. And essentially what a hair mask. Essentially what hair masks are are beneficial rich ingredients in higher concentrations of natural oils and lipids that you will see versus a conditioner. So it's essentially just a conditioner but stronger and typically they have better ingredients because the price point is around like 25 to 30. The ingredients are a lot nicer and a lot better for your hair. I tried the caviar one, which is the most expensive one. It's around $68 and this Kerastase one. And I didn't find that these worked for my hair. I think more so because they're for fine hair or aging hair. So if you're older, they might work for you. But what I would recommend for somebody younger is the Brigio Don't Despair Repair Hair Mask or my favorite, the Amica Soul Food Hair Mask. So those are the two types of products that I would recommend over a shampoo, and then the product I would recommend over a conditioner. If eventually what you need to do is a stronger cleanse, then what I would recommend is a um, scalp scrub, and I'll put two below of which I'll recommend, and I'll show, just pop them up on the screen, but this is one of them, and this is the IGK Scalp Scrub. What a scalp scrub helps to do is to help exfoliate it, deeply cleanse it, and remove any product buildup. Some people might have clicked this video because you're interested in hair growth. What I would be more focused on is hair health. And so these products I think will help you achieve a healthier scalp and hair, thereby resulting in what you want, which is hair growth. My third tip it revolves around food and nutrition. So this is more scientifically based. A lot of people think that if you just use certain products, you'll get the results that you want. I think it's a more holistic standpoint for it to be revolved around nutrition. For my third tip, I'm gonna say that your diet is the most important thing, and two, that you should see food as fuel for one, your body, but then also to help your hair grow. You should also see that the supplements that I'm recommending can be found naturally in food, and that's where you should be deriving most of your supplementation from your food. The major factors for hair growth are age, genetics, and hormones. And I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that messed up my hormones. So about like three or four years ago, I had to completely redo my entire health like regimen, basically to restore my hair health. And back then it was, my hair was just like falling out and dead but now it's a lot better. The first two tips that revolved around shampoo and conditioner, but this is actually my most important tip because it's where I saw a direct correlation to my hair health if I just focused on my overall health and well-being instead. So the first vitamin that a lot of people talk about is directly correlated with sebum. And I already discussed sebum and how you want to preserve that in your scalp and your hair. You can do so by eating a lot of foods with vitamin A. Vitamin A is the direct vitamin that helps keep the glands on your scalp healthy and to help them produce the sebum. So sweet potato, pumpkin, carrot, spinach, and kale are top foods that produce beta carotene, which turns into vitamin A. That will directly help your scalp produce more sebum and allow it to have a healthier glow, be more um, conditioned, and overall keep your scalp at a healthy environment in itself. That's essentially the oversimplification of it. I think I can go into this in a ton of different videos, but um, I'm just giving you the summary essentially. The next vitamin that I kind of went wrong in is vitamin B. And so vitamin B is found in whole grain, almond, fish, seafood, and dark leafy greens. And it's found like in a heavy abundance in these foods, most over the store counter products like vitamins, shampoo, and conditioner that are revolved around hair growth and hair care have a lot of vitamin B biotin. I think three years ago when I started getting sick, I made it a lot worse because I started taking supplements that had biotin in it. This, for example, is sold at Whole Foods, but in itself it has 2,000 mcgs of biotin. A lot of doctors will say you should take something with a lot of biotin in it, but studies in biotin show that it directly correlated with breaking down the function of your thyroid, which is a common condition in people above 30 and up. If you're taking too much biotin, it can mess up things like your thyroid and you can produce too much T levels, which is directly correlated with your hormones. A lot of women especially start showing signs of a thyroid disorder, but I think it's a lot to do with 
women getting to their 30s and then starting taking a lot of biotin. But in what they want to see in their hair health, it starts affecting other things that are affecting the hormones, resulting in worse health. So when I had a premature thyroid condition, my naturopath thought it was due to possibly taking too much biotin in the amount that's normally prescribed in 2,000 mcgs or 5,000 mcgs. Instead of focusing on my other health issues, I focused on my outward appearance, my hair, because that's just what I'm used to seeing as an example of my overall health. And typically you don't need to supplement in biotin because it's found in majority of foods. And that messed up my hormones, which made my hair even worse because if you have an imbalanced hormone, then you will just see typically a lot of hair fall or autoimmune diseases. Again, I can go into it a lot more, but these are just the top supplements that I'm going to recommend for you in finding it from natural food sources. A lot of people recommend vitamin C. This is probably the most important vitamin that I think a lot of researchers and people studying like overall nutrition is researching. Vitamin C helps directly prevent against free radicals. Essentially what free radicals are, are unstable atoms that are being produced in our body as we age, essentially causing structural cells in your DNA to be damaged and therefore not being able to work properly, in turn creates aging. This is a more new research that's being studied, but the top three reasons of free radicals being accelerated in your body are smoking, alcohol, and fried foods. There's a fourth one, I just don't remember it. I'll try Googling it and putting it here. Simplified approach into preventing free radical damage in your body is taking a lot of antioxidants, which are found in fruits and plant vegetables, and typically other supplements. The research on free radicals is relatively new, but it's being linked to a lot of autoimmune diseases that scientists can't really understand where it's all coming from. A lot of doctors actually recommend that if you have low exposure to sun, for example, if you're on the east coast versus the west coast of the United States, then you can take at least 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin D and just supplement with that. The last vitamin is protein, and that's because majority of your hair is created out of protein. You can do that a ton of different ways. You don't have to eat meat to do it. You can do it with fish or vegan options. But another option that I do personally is I drink um, a protein smoothie without gluten and dairy and anything that I mentioned previously, you can kind of just throw it in and drink it all at once. I also supplement with this um, and I've taken this since middle school too and that's because we moved to a new area growing up and they had a Whole Foods which I've never been to because I'm from the Midwest. So I saw this and it helps with circulation and that's also a major aspect in your hair health. It helps with a lot more other things but it helps directly with circulation, digestion, immunity, and nutrition. So I take a green supplement as well. And it's just this powder um, that you can blend into anything really. And I blend it into orange juice usually because vitamin C. That at least is everything revolved in tip three. is just to prevent damage and you can do that a ton of different ways. Females damage their hair a lot more frequently than males do but that's because they're bleaching their hair, they're using hot tools to curl and style their hair. If you're using a lot of tools which have heat or going into the sun you can use a heat protectant. The easiest thing you can do at home outside of that is that you can use a satin or silk pillowcase. Marshalls for 12 bucks and it's a pack of two. Normally they're like 20 bucks for just one pillowcase. You can go to like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, anywhere that resells product and find satin or silk pillowcases for a lot cheaper. The main reason people are using silk and satin pillowcases is because it's preventing damage from your hair but also your skin. The next point for preventing damage in your hair is bleach and I feel like if you're bleaching your hair frequently mostly women are doing that but what you can do is bleach your hair with coconut oil and that'll help retain the moisture and also the condition of your hair. If you have wet hair, your hair is already a little bit more fragile than it would be dry, so you want to use a comb. But I use these lifting combs, which also help to add volume, and they're a little bit wider than typical combs. It's going to help give you the lift that you want in your hair. If you're using a wide comb, it's not getting caught on the little bristles in between as frequently as it would with a lot more like teeth. Another thing I can recommend are these little hair clips that aren't too harsh on your hair. They're really fragile when they pinch your hair, so it won't cause any creasing or damage to your hair. And 
a lot of people actually do, but if you live in an area with hard water, essentially what hard water does is that it disrupts the pH balance of your hair and scalp, and that's because there's a higher mineral content in the water. If you're disrupting the pH balance in your hair and using warm water, essentially that doesn't create an environment in your scalp to create oil or sebum. So it's going to cause your hair to dry out and it will lead to a lot of buildup in your hair and scalp. I didn't experience this, but my brother experienced a lot of dandruff growing up and it was because of the hard water. If you have a lot of hard water, it creates this film on your scalp and it doesn't allow the moisture to enter your hair. What I do now in any apartment that I live in is I just add a shower head filter. If you get a nicer one, it works better, but what it does is take away the mineral content, it helps purify the water, and it helps balance the pH of the water so that it'll create a better environment for your hair and your skin overall. So the result of dry, tangy, strange color hair and dandruff won't occur as frequently because you're directly resolving the issue of it being hard water. You can buy pH strips and test your water much like you would a pool and find out if you have hard water that way. Tip number six is to just try to be less stressed. That's actually really difficult because a lot more commonly people are being diagnosed with anxiety and depression. But I also do think that health and lifestyle choices that you make can help you combat signs of stress. Hair loss is directly associated with stress and that's because it's affecting certain bodily functions such as circulation. But in certain cases like alopecia, your body has to focus on preserving other bodily functions. And so typically what you see is that less circulation is being directed towards your hair and your body is quite literally focusing less on your scalp. Luckily for me, I was able to sign up for yoga as a student for $10 a class. I know it's a lot more expensive if you're in a city, but I also do think that there are a lot of resources online. Yoga with Adrian, I think, is a really strong YouTuber that offers yoga classes. I went to a specific instructor named Carolyn and she made me focus on my breathing but also at least doing the yoga positions correctly and helping me understand that there is a mind and body connection especially in relation to anxiety and depression. She was a very relaxing person for me to go to and I think that you just need to find your teacher. You might want to start with Yoga and Adrian, and I'll definitely link her below. Two supplements that I would directly correlate with stress are salt palmetto and ashwagandha. What it does in men is block the hormone DHT, which is a major leading cause of hair loss in men. A lot of people say it's directly correlated with reducing signs of stress in the body. I have started taking this about three years ago and I definitely feel like it is one of the major things that helped me naturally combat signs of stress. the overly simplified six tips that I would give for hair care. I'm making a video every week and it helps me a lot if you like this video and subscribe. You can also recommend videos you want to see from me and I'll definitely try to make that because I am making a video every week.